Oh boy, let's talk about this one. Let's get back to work. Let's talk about this one. Okay, police identify Lakewood Church shooter. For those of you who don't know, this happened at the Lakewood Church where um, Joel Alstein is the minister and it's a pretty sad story and I want to share some thoughts at the end. Let's first begin with this news clip and let's talk as we go. We've got some breaking news. The police have identified the person who opened fire at Joel Osteen's mega church in Houston yesterday. William Lajeunesse is on this for us. William, what exactly are we learning? So we just got a hold of the search warrant and can confirm that the shooter is identified as a 36-year-old Genesee Yvonne Moreno. She had been born a man, Jeffrey Escalante, from El Salvador and has a lengthy criminal record. Now, according to the search warrant from Montgomery County, she pointed an AR-15 at the officers, off-duty officers who were in the church at the time, and she they fired upon her, killed her, and was considered in self-defense. Also, you know, there was word that they, uh, the woman had claimed that she had a bomb and she had a backpack. They checked that out. Turned out it wasn't true. But according to the search warrant, she was in possession of a yellow color rope and substances consistent with the manufacture of explosives. They thought that was a detonation cord. Uh, they looked into it and it turned out not to be the case. We're also hearing from local reports that the five-year-old who was with this woman um, is likely not to make it. Um, this, the five-year-old boy has been in critical condition, and according to the Houston Chronicle, it doesn't appear mm. that that individual is going to make it. A 50 That's sad. That is so sad. That is so sad. Even a five-year-old was used as a pawn for this crime. So we noticed this, this increase in mass shootings, and I think um, Donald Trump Jr. had a video here where many are trying to debunk and say this is not true, this is incorrect, and so on. But let's let's hear the argument first before we debunk the man, because I think I think he's making he's making a lot of sense here. Oh my God, folks! It's literally happening. It's happening. The media is framing the Nashville, Tennessee murder of three innocent young children and three adults at a Catholic school as dangerous for the trans community. When, when a Christian school was shot up and Christian children killed in cold blood by a trans murderer with a manifesto that says, you mess with our kids, we'll kill your kids. They're blamed, mm. they're, they're covering up the nonsense. Remember folks, there's a clear epidemic of trans or non-binary mass shooters People who, according to the CDC, make up 0.6% of the adult population of this country. You add in children, and it's significantly less. The media is totally silent, except for to blame you or to call you a bigot for pointing out the trend. Yeah, um, I, I can understand where he's coming from, even though a lot of news articles believe this was incorrect, that there is no such thing as a trend. It is not happening. There's nothing to worry about. I mean, I'm very skeptical of anything these uh, media networks are going to tell me anything anyway, because there are a number of reasons why I don't believe them, because they've been lying about a lot number of things. So I, I don't know if they're ever going to come out and be honest with us and say, yeah, this is going on because of what we are thinking. And I think Donald Trump Jr. does have a point that he's making here, although he doesn't really speak about every single case because we have to take this as on a personal level in case by case point so so this this argument that there is no there is no there is the data is clear there is no clear epidemic of transgender mass shooter well they are a small group of people but if we have a number of shooters who are trans that in itself should be a concern where we should ask ourselves the question what is it about this group of people that we have this many of them if they are so small 1.6 something percent of the population but many of the mass shootings lately there happen to be trends now you can argue whether or not it's a male or a female well i can tell you women don't go around doing that <laughs> study shows rarely does a woman will go around do that i mean the, the aggression happens to happen with those that are male, but most of that is there's also a degree of mental health that needs to be considered as well. So 
Benny Johnson speaks about this. Uh, uh, well, Newsweek is writing about that. The facts. It, and, you know, it, I, anyway, I don't know. I don't spend time reading Newsweek. I think it's a waste of time, to be honest with you. I don't mean to be so biased, but I think it really is it's a waste of time. So Benny Johnson in his... Um, in his tweet says, Colorado shooter identify as a non-binary. Denver shooter identify as trans. And the artist and shooter identify as trans. Nashville shooter identify as trans. On a very, uh, one thing is very clear. The modern trans movement is radicalizing activists into terrorists. I mean, he's got a point. I mean, you don't have to like it. Uh, but what he's saying does seem to appear. Uh, it could be true. But here is the thing. There is this notion right when you have messages like this being you when you have children being told things like this um i think you can radicalize them easily when you say three anti-lgbtq laws have been enacted so far this week in kansas indiana and idaho just yesterday the north dakota senate passed 10 anti-lgbtq bills in just one day a single day record LGBTQI plus kids are resilient. They are fierce, they fight back, they're not going anywhere, and we have their back. This administration has their back. We are so proud of the kids across this country who have organized protests and school walkouts to tell the politicians in their states to stop this legislative bullying. I know that these political attacks can really take toll on, on people's mental health. So I want to say directly to LGBTQI plus kids, you are loved just as you are, just the way you are. Wow. So, I mean, there's a lot that could be said about that, right? Should the should your political leaders um, be backing up one specific group at the expense of all others? So it's almost like, yeah, it's, uh, it's they against us, you know? And I think that's problematic. I think the concern should be we have the back of the American people. We stand for values that are true. We believe in the Constitution. That's where the, I mean, the, the, the state should position itself. But what we have is the state supporting a specific group, and it's a small group, and while they're doing that, they are rejecting a whole bunch of other people. And I think uh, that's that's problematic. And this is not to say you shouldn't support people. You shouldn't stand for groups of people. By all means, I think you should stand for people, period. But not because they identify as this. I think you should stand for people because God created all men. We should love our neighbor as ourselves, period. But when we are beginning to back up specific groups that aligns with our supposed political beliefs, at the expense of all others, I think this is when you get into that I ideological war and you start uh, picking and choosing who is worthy of your support. And that creates serious problems in, 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 our, in our society. And that's kind of where I stand when it comes to that. And I want to come back to the news to finish this thing here. And I think what's going on here, that's, that's kind of a problem. Uh, and I think to say that there is no connection whatsoever with the fact that the person might be trans and who knows how much of these drugs being pumped in them could have an effect on their decision making. We might not know. It takes us years to realize the nature of these beasts. But nevertheless, we're still pumping kids with these drugs. We believe this is still good for them. It's part of their identity. It's part of their freedom. They have to fight the pa patriarchy and the white men and the Christian con conservatives and so on. Right. But in the process of doing that, we might be creating another monster that we are not ready to deal with. 57-year-old man was also shot in this altercation at Lakewood Church um, there in Houston, uh, which of course is uh, operated by celebrity pastor uh, Joel Osteen. Uh, that individual, uh, the 57-year-old man, he's going to be okay. He was shot in the leg. But the information we're getting now, we've seen um, a, a lengthy criminal record on this individual. Again, um, as a man, he had a lengthy record um, of assaulting a police officer, um, marijuana. Um, also, uh, I've got a lengthy record here of several different offenses uh, over, the, over about the past since 2005. 
So that's what we got from the here, and uh, news conference is scheduled to begin at 2.30 Eastern, and we should get more information. Yeah, among Back the most you. serious, the 2009 assault uh, of a police officer in Houston, William, 2010 forgery, most recently, 2022, a misdemeanor weapons charge for unlawful carrying a weapon. Uh, William Lajones, as you mentioned, 2.30, we're going to get an update from the police there, and we'll certainly take that live. Did you some have something to add? Well, no, just only on the AR-15, he had written, scrawled, Free Palestine. Yes, a big and growing part of that story. Mm -hmm. And, William, um, we have the picture now um, of this suspect up on the screen. Yeah, and, you know, when um, we're going to get the, we have five of those photos that we're loading right now into the, into the computer system. But when you look at the progression of this individual over the last five or six years, um, definitely had a pretty hard life because uh, there's a great transformation uh, from the first photos uh, from the mug shots that were taken to the one you're seeing right now. So, uh, bo uh, born as Jeffrey Escalante Moreno, um, goes by the alias Jeness Yvonne Moreno. We're going to have more on this when the police update at 2.30. Thank you, William. Okay, I get it. I Correlation doesn't always mean causation okay we can agree i i i simply say this uh, my argument is simply this why not investigate it early enough and if we are wrong then we are wrong we can accept it as so instead of just pacifying allowing things to go on not addressing the real issue for what it is just justifying and saying this could never be but what we should do is study the fact that is there a connection right and I pray for these families. I pray for the five-year-old and those who have been hurt, wounded and hurt. Um, irrespective of how I feel about Joel Alstein, I'm not a big fan of Joel Alstein's doctrine, but I think Joel Alstein's church should not be targeted for whatever the reason may be. Uh, Free Palestine was written on a gun. The person had mental health. He still had access to a gun. So that's another discussion. I think, I don't know, That's, that could be discussed as well. But what we're not going to do is going after the weapon. I think we should go after the individual and talk about what is behind the scene in pushing these people to make these decisions. What is the motivation? And I think whenever we hear free, free, free Palestine, there's a level of radicalism as well. And if you keep telling people like Corinne Jean-Pierre is saying, from my perspective, whenever you're telling people that, you know, the laws are trying to do this to you, they're trying to restrict you, they're trying... I mean, there's already a serious mental health among these group of people. And if you keep telling them stuff like this, I mean, it won't be hard for them to be radicalized. And there's drug in their systems and all these hormones that are being pumped in them. It's not helping their thinking processes. And yet we are hearing from the White House, we're going to stand for you. you know, we should stand for the American people. We should stand for families and actually denounce criminals. That's what we should be doing. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I want to hear from you. Is there a connection? I think there is. I think it's something that needs to be studied. And I think by all means, we should be protecting and praying for this country and for families who are dealing with some of this issue. But I think um, there might be some cases. It looks to me that there's some psychological stuff going on behind the scene too that is making this happen. It seems like there is a movement behind the scene to create more of these types of people. Don't ask me how to, I can explain it. All I can simply say, I smell it. I smell something strange that is telling me there is, there is someone behind the scene. I wanna, I don't know, I don't know which tweet letter alphabet is behind the scene, you know, pressing the buttons, saying this is what we want. And I think they're creating this, some of this stuff. I, you, can, you can agree or disagree. You may think I'm just, you know, having a tinfoil hat moment. Maybe that's a possibility, but sometimes it's kind of true. Um, share your thought and perspective with me. What do you stand when it comes to this? You know, friends, it's sad. It should not be happening. It's becoming more common. I don't know where this is going to go, but by all means, my dear friends, I think if you are in a church, um, you might as well pack it. <laughs> I'm so serious. I'm so serious. Pack it. And I, I strongly believe in that. I strongly believe in that. Uh, I'm not. I don't push this on my channel all the time, but I'm just saying the way things are going, it seems like some of these people are targeting churches, church people. Uh, you might as well go to church with what the Bible in one hand and, and you you got your, you know what I'm saying? In the other hand, 
just in case somebody makes their way to the church to say we're going to bring havoc to this place, we can have a funeral. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more. You know, YouTube hasn't been friendly to your boy. Demonetize the channel. We still don't know why. So stand with us. We have links in the description below where you can support us as well. Patreon is one of the best ways to go. Um, but there's other ways you can stand with us and you can watch and have early access to videos that other people will not have access to. So um, anyway, I'm going to leave a link to a number of videos on the side here on my left. I'm going to leave some more of my playlists. And on the other side to my right, I'm going to leave, I'm going to let YouTube recommend a video that best fits your description and your liking according to the algorithm. So share your thought and perspective with me at the end. Let's stay in touch. If you have any question, I have my information below. Let's talk. Have a good one. Bye.